coming up. Since it is a crash course, since it's a crash course, I decided to start my lecture with a crash test. Guys, you are in a crash course. When I say crash course, I don't know how many of you have listened to my lecture on the main focus class of last year. I don't know how many have listened to me. In the main focus class, not the crash course, in the main focus class, one point I was always stressing was that if you listen to a topic for 15 minutes, you should be able to answer five MCQ questions. Anybody remember that concept which I told? And that concept has been followed by all the faculties of focus, if I remember correctly. If you listen to a lecture for 15 minutes, you should be able to answer at least five MCQs. Now, forget lecture. If you read a topic for 15 minutes, you should be able to get five questions out of it. If you see a YouTube video of 15 minutes, you should be able to get five MCQ questions out of it. That is the way to prepare for entrance. But now we are talking about crash course. When it comes to crash course seen is slightly different, I would say. I suggest 10 minutes. 10 minutes of explanation should give you 10 questions. Uh, that is tough. We are talking about tough stuff here, but that is called crash course. Otherwise, what's the difference between a normal course and a crash course? 10 minutes you listen to something, you should be able to answer 10 MCQs at least. If that target, if you keep and move forward, things are good going to be very, very easy. So let me quickly go into today's topic here, directly starting with one patient scenario here, severe overjet patient in front of you, severe overjet. The moment you see severe overjet like that, first and foremost, incisive relationship. I told you I'm refreshing many basic stuff in orthodontics, incisive relationship, the overjet, you know overjet, come on, it should be one to, two, one to three millimeter as normal and anything more than that is increased overjet. So incisive relationship, you've got to have an idea, so much of questions are coming in MCQs, in entrance-based questions related to overjet, overbite and all that, please make sure you get an idea about that. But in this particular patient I'm discussing today, it is overjet increased by what considerable amount compared to the normal we're talking about 8 10 11 millimeter overjet here so what is overjet how much it is increased have an idea about that that is the incisor relationship next is the molar relationship ideal molar relationship is class one molar relationship now there are so many questions related to class one molar relationship means your buccal cusp falls on the fossa of the lower so many confusing ways they might ask end answer will be class one molar relationship but you have to have an idea about which cusp meets which fossa to get a clear idea now what if that molar relationship from class one moves to class two. So the upper molar has gone forward. Instead of the mesiobuccal cusp falling onto the lower foresight is the distobuccal cusp. So what happened? Upper molar has gone forward. That is class. So in this particular patient we are discussing, we have a class two molar relationship. Those who are listening to me, those who are having I video at least, show me a thumbs up. Got a rough idea. What is incisor overjet? Come on, I know it's a very simple topic I covered. And then molar relationship class two. But that single concept called as class two molar relationship can be asked in so many ways in MCQs. So you got to be thorough about it when you prepare for entrance. Once the anterior relation and the molar relation is being done, Let's go to the position of the maxilla. Where is maxilla of that particular patient? We are talking about a patient now. In that patient, where is the maxilla? To find out the position of the maxilla, we need to get cephalometrics in place. Cephalometrics, oh my God, that is such a boring topic. Why is this fellow talking about cephalometrics? 
we hate it right from third year final year we hate it and i don't want to go into the details of cyclometrics but all i want to cover today is one point that is the position of the maxilla because i have a patient in front here and the patient has a severe overjet severe overjet with a molar class 2 that is dental we have to talk about the skeletal skeletal we have to know the positioning of the maxilla to know the position of the maxilla only cephalometric relationship you have to know is sna i'm sure you heard about sna snba and be oh my you have mugged it up steiner's analysis downs analysis sna snba SNA, and all that now what is sna cella nasion cella nasion to nasion a point is sna Cella nasion. Cella nasion means what? Cella is that that pituitary fossa thing, and the nasion is here. So cella nasion is basically representing the cranial base. So you have the cranial base set there. You know what? Cranial base area fuses first. If you look at the cephalocaudal growth pattern, this area fuses first and then maxilla, then mandible. That is how the growth goes in growth and development. I don't want to go into all that. So cephalo, the cell anation is a stable structure. It won't change once the growth is going on, that the area that fuses first. Then the A point. A point is in the maxilla. The moment you hear A point, guys, it is the maxilla. A point means maxilla. So cell anation in relation to the A point, from the side view, in relation to the A point, the normal value of cell anation to A point is 82 degree. 82 degree. So if that instead of 82, if it is 92, what does that mean? That means my maxilla is more forward. Am I right or wrong? Maxilla is more forward. Now, like, let's look at this patient we are discussing now. In this particular patient we are discussing now, the value is 83. Means what? In this particular patient, maxilla is normal. 82 to 83, that's nothing. It's normal. 2 to 3 degree here and there is okay. So you have a normal maxilla for the patient we are talking about. Next, you have to look at the mandible. Mandible means B point. Same, cell anation the B point. B point is the most retruded position of the chin, of the alveolar bone meeting with the chin, the S-shaped curvature and all that. I don't want to say have already covered in the other program. So position of the mandible is the B point. So cell anation to the B point normally has to be 80 degree. Normally it has to be 80 degree. If it is more than 80, what does that mean? Mandible out. If it is less than 80, mandible in. Hope I'm making sense, guys. So this particular patient, which we are discussing, has a SNB value of 71. So what does that mean? Come to the chat box. Tell me, what does that mean? Is it too much, too less? Normal? Less than normal? Too less. So you have a mandible which is deficient here. That is proved by this value. So the patient in front of you has an increased overjet, has a class two molar relationship, but maxilla normal, mandible retrognathic, mandible behind. So what do you, how do you classify it as? Dental class two, skeletal class two, both class twos. Here, I just want you to not to forget their condition called as class 2 diff 2. Class 2 diff 2 is different from what we discussed just now. This is class 2 division 1. Division 2 means the incisors, upper incisors, central incisors are retroclined. Central incisors retroclined, laterals normal or proclined. Normally, it will be normal. Ideally, it will be normal. But the central incisors got a retroclination. That's called class 2 diff 2. 
just to complete that occlusion part, I want to talk about class 2 Div 2 also. But the patient in discussion today here is a class 2 Div 1 case we are discussing. And we found out that it is his mandible that is behind. And that is the reason for that increased overjet and all that. Maxilla is normal. Mandible is behind. Are we together up to here, guys? Please tell me. One thumbs up. Those who are listening to me, and those in the video at least, a thumbs up will help me. Ambali, Fatima, very difficult to raise your hands. Oh, good. She is like digital person. She will only put digital thumbs up. You can raise your hands and show like this, Dr. Fatima. Anyway, thank you so much. Thank you so much for doing that. So we covered class two dental. Class 2 skeletal and just covered a little something called as class 2 div 2 also. Now let's come to the patient we are discussing. The patient we are discussing has a severe proclination. Class 2 div 1 confirmed. Maxilla normal confirmed. Mandible retrognathic confirmed. We need some more confirmation as a private practitioner. Understand that I am a pure private practitioner for the last 22 years. For a private practitioner, we need more confirmations. Actually, I don't care about cephalometrics much. But in private practice, there is something called as VTO confirmation. VTO is nothing but visual treatment objective. What are you trying to achieve in your patient? Visual treatment objective. Ask the patient to bring the mandible forward. Look at this kid. In this kid, you are asking the kid to bring the mandible forward. When the kid brings the mandible forward, can you see a change in her profile? Can you see the profile has improved a lot? Let's look at the same thing from the front view. Front view. This is a typical class 2 div 1 with mandible way behind with lower lip inside. Ask the patient to bring the mandible forward. Can you see a flatness? Can you see a fullness for the face? This is called visual treatment objective. The moment you understand that VTO is positive, VTO positive means bringing mandible forward is giving a beautiful change to her profile, her looks. That's called VTO positive. Once you understand that VTO is positive, we now have a treatment plan almost ready, but you have to look at one last thing now, the growth stage. Is she a growing patient or not? I never told the age of this patient. This particular patient when in discussion is around 11 year, 12 year old cases here. So growth stage, you have to confirm. How do you confirm the stage of growth? That 11 year, 12 year, just a calendar value. The confirmation comes from CVMI or hand wrist radiograph. I don't want to go in as a huge topic itself called growth determination by cervical vertebrae maturation index or hand wrist radiograph, which will confirm exactly which stage is he or she in. Because, you know, in females, you can ask whether she has started her menstruation cycle and all that to know whether she is in the brim of growth. In males, you can see whether the facial hair has started growing and all that. But that's not confirmatory. Confirmation comes from CVMI or hand wrist radiograph. So in this particular case we are discussing, I confirmed that it is a growing kid and you can bring the mandible forward. Guys, come to the chat box and tell me, in case if it was a growth over person, 18-year-old, 19-year-old, growth over, same condition, exact same condition, growth over, tell me what would be the treatment plan? How do you bring the mandible forward? Yes, you got, Dr. Geeta clearly said, you got to bring the mandible forward surgically. So bringing mandible forward remains the same. Treatment 
plan cannot change. How to bring forward? If it's a growing kid, bring it forward using myofunctional appliances. If it's an adult, bring it forward using surgical methodologies. But treatment plan or the concept remains exactly the same. This is a growing kid, so I decided to go for bringing the mandible forward using twin block appliance. Twin block appliance is a beauty of an appliance, beauty of a, a myofunctional appliance. Upper block and lower block put together called as twin block. Simple terminology, twin block. That's the upper block, that's the lower block. Just tell the patient to put a Holly's appliance like thing in the upper, Holly's appliance like thing in the lower, but it has two blocks. These two blocks meet at an angle in such a way that each time the patient bites, the mandible is purposefully brought forward. She or he can only bite forward. That is twin block. So, Twin block appliance. Just have a look at this video. Mandible is forced to bite forward. Let's look at the video once more. Mandible is forced to bite forward. So what happens? The whole pterygoid muscles, if I don't know whether you know the anatomy, the, the lateral pterygoids, these Muscles are being trained to bite forward with this appliance. And it's a growing kid. So you are allowing the growth potential of the mandible. And you are asking the maxilla to stay there. How are you asking the maxilla to stay there? Can you see a thick label bow there on the maxilla? So maxilla is stable. Maxilla is told, just stay there. You are fine. You're doing good. Let the mandible come forward a little faster. The speed difference between maxilla and mandible is too much. So maxilla, please stop there. Let the mandible catch up. That's all you're doing. Asking the mandible to catch up. Will it cause any pain in the condylar region? Pregnancy? Good question. No. Because if it is a confirmed case of mandible behind, it will only give comfort by bringing forward. But there's a catch in that question. You can't bring forward like eight, 10 millimeter forward like that. There is a, there is a limit how much to bring forward. So if the total overhead is 13 millimeter, don't try to bring it to two millimeter directly from 13 millimeter. That may not be possible. That's too much for the contiles to take. You might have to go step by step there. Bring little forward, then modify your uh, twin block and put a new twin block and get little more forward possible. Go slow. So that is twin block. And this is the same patient with that severe overjet, confirmed maxilla normal, mandible behind. Six months into twin block treatment, got the mandible forward. You can see the mandible is got forward, x-ray taken immediately after the twin block treatment, just got over, bite has to settle now, bite hasn't settled, it has just got forward. That is twin block. And this is him immediately after bringing the mandible forward. Same type, another case parallelly going on. I'm actually showing two cases together here. This is the same thing, both growing kids. No orthodontics done on this female. Just did twin block therapy, got the mandible forward. Now that little gap here and there and that buccal corridor, darkness and all, she might require straight wear orthodontics as a different topic. Do it. I'm talking about bringing the mandible forward at the right age, right time when you identified that the mandible is deficient. So what is this twin block? It's a myofunctional appliance. It is primarily used for class two skeletal correction. Why am I stressing on these points? Because this is how the MCQ questions are being manipulated. And the design, it has two blocks. Obviously two blocks was called as twin block. 
the two blocks and the two blocks meet at an incline two blocks are not like 90 degree it's at an incline and then incline is normally around 70 degree inclines so they correct the maxillo mandibular relationship by functional development that's why it's called myo functional appliance muscular functional appliance upper and lower block meet at an incline and an incline is normally in the range of around 70 degree advantages patient acceptance is very good this is the only one appliance i would tell you patients are so happy to wear the moment you put it in the face changes the kid has a better look, better profile. Kid is happy. Parents are more than happy. Oh my God, now my daughter is looking like me. I was wondering from where she got this face. Now she is looking like me. So that is parents' confidence. Parents' confidence means patient is in your hand. Don't worry. It allows freedom of movement. Unlike other class two characters, like your activators, bionators, there are many class two characters, guys. This is the only appliance that gives complete freedom of lateral excursions and anterior and posterior movements of the mandible. And significant changes can be seen in two to three months. So this all becomes the advantages of the thing. Twin block, there are many types of twin blocks. Mainly, I would classify it as two, removable twin block and fixed twin block. Now, why am I stressing it here is there are so, last year, there was a picture-based question in national boards with a picture like this. So, removable or fixed. If you see a picture like this, will this be removable or fixed? Obviously, it has an Adam's clasp and a label bow and all that. Yeah, those are retentive devices of it, removable appliance. So this is a removable twin block. Fatima Salim has asked a question. If patients having a gummy smile, what will we do? Again, are we talking about this particular kid? Okay, now if you look at this, let me go back quickly since you asked the question and hardly 20 people are listening to me. Uh, I'm going back and uh, checking this. This patient, this is not a smiling picture, actually. If she smiles, she has a gummy smile. She has a severe gummy smile. She's not smiling. It's not a smiling picture. You get, get to me personally. Contact me personally. I'll give you my number. I'll show this patient smiling picture. It's a severe gummy smile. But that gummy smile is purely due to that maxilla, purely due to the mandible so way behind. The, the, the moment you bring the mandible forward, gummy smile goes off in many cases, but there are some exceptions. Wait, Fatima, I'm not done yet. I'm going to talk about the exceptions soon. So let me just quickly go forward. Advantages I covered, types of twin block, removable. Removable means patient can remove it and put it anytime they want. And this is the problem with removable. If they don't wear it, you had it. Then comes fixed. Fixed is fixed down to the teeth. They cannot remove it. It has no Adam's clasp, nothing. Just upper block, lower block, fixed with glass iron or cement onto the teeth. It's a fixed device. Mainly used along with fixed orthodontics. So I am a big advocate of fixed twin block. I very rarely go for removable twin block because I have a pediatric dentist in my clinic who is mainly doing removable twin blocks. I do all these brim growth getting or cases where I don't have time to waste. I go for fixed twin block. So two types, removable and fixed. Which is better? Obviously, fixed is better because it's a guaranteed result. Patient has to wear it from day one. There is no question of removing it. Within Three to four weeks, you can get the mandible almost in a forward position. Pterygoids almost responding so well within days, within weeks, if it is fixed. If it's removable, it is a little slow. I'm almost done concluding with one more case here. Another patient with a severe reprognathic mandible. 
severe retrognathic mandible, all the typical concepts of a deep bite. Can you see deep bite, severe overjet, crowding in the upper, crowding in the upper is also there. Retrognathic mandible, confirmed with cephalometrics, everything that it is a retrognathic mandible. Now, this is the upper arch and the lower arch. Look at the crowding in the upper arch, crowding in the lower arch. So I decided to go for fixed orthodontics, unravel the crowding first, get the crowding cleared first. Let the patient have a crowded free arch and then bring the mandible forward. Now, since it's a uh, brim stage, 13 year, 14 year old kid, you have, I had to go for fixed twin block. So with that fixed twin block, just see the change happening to the fellow. Just bringing the mandible forward, you can see he becomes an adult already. Man already. You can see the difference in him. The confidence in him. He changed. He completely changed. He is uh, an MBBS student now. Completely changed. So that is the beauty of identifying that the mandible is behind and bringing it forward. There are some modifications of twin block. Can somebody come to the chat box and tell me what you see here as a modification of twin block? Modification. Expansion screw is being placed there is a modification. So if you see the arch is constricted, the upper arch constricted, that is that is intermolar width less, intercanine width less. This 19 people listening to me now, please attend the program this Sunday, Independence Day night, 8 p.m. I am doing a program exclusively in our platform. My platform is called as online dentistry platform. I'm doing a program exclusively on expanders alone. As crash course attending students, doctors, let me tell you, you will get some points out of that one hour program on this Sunday, Independence Day night, 8 p.m. If you're not in my online dentistry WhatsApp groups, please send me a personal WhatsApp. I will give you the link for the, the free program, Independence Day night, 8 p.m. Listen to that on expansions. Rapid expansion, slow expansion, and the varieties are covered there, but it's not entrance-based. But let me tell you, every 15 minutes, or 10 minutes of what you listen, you will get some fight and questions for sure. That is my guarantee, I told you. But I will not be discussing any MCQ questions on Sunday night. It's for a bigger platform. It's not for entrance preparation platform at all. So this is a modification with a screw. There's another modification here. Can somebody comment about what is this modification of twin block? I can put a mark there. Now tell me, what is this modification of twin block? No comments? Okay, now this particular modification of the twin block is incorporating a headgear tube, molar tube, or yeah, somebody said molar tube, not bad. It's a headgear tube to fix a headgear. Ah, uh, headgear. Now that answers the question asked by Dr. Fatima, I think. What if there is a gummy smile? So if the patient has a severe gummy smile, that means the maxilla is growing downward. So in the twin block, put two headgear tubes and ask the patient to wear a headgear. Like this particular patient you see there has a gummy smile. Along with the twin block, at night while sleeping, patient has to wear one more thing called as headgear, which will take the maxilla up a little. Otherwise, what do twin block do? Twin block will just bring the mandible forward. That's it. It will just stop the maxilla, that's all. Here, in addition to stopping the maxilla, it is taking the maxilla up a little with that headgear. That's a modification of 
to invoke. Guys, that's it. I'm done. Quickly, 10 minutes, 10 MCQs. I know I took more than 10 minutes, but 10 MCQs has to be covered quickly now. 10 minutes of explanation has to... Why, why we are using headgear at night? Aha, uh -huh. Sri Hari. Uh, what does that mean? You want the patient to wear the headgear in the daytime? Wearing headgear in the daytime is no fun for the patient. That's all I can say. So patient will not wear. At least try to get it wear at night. You will be successful. It is so difficult to convince a patient to wear a headgear these days. This is 2021. Very difficult. But there are certain cases that work wonders if they wear only at night. Daytime, if they wear, it's well and good. But which kid will wear? Nine-year-old wearing headgear during daytime? Impossible. Impossible. So 10 minutes explanation, 10 MCQs, quickly. Quickly, come and answer, fast. Which is present in angles class two division, uh, class two uh, division, one second, class two division two malocclusion. Yes, oh wow, you guys know everything. I think I wasted your time. Perfect, retrusion. Now, SNA angle of the cephalogram, SNA angle is mandible to cranial base. No, no, no. SNA, A point is maxilla. So maxilla to the cranial base. Okay, so answer is B again. Then, malocclusion catheter is a protrusion. And yeah, go ahead. Quick, quick, quick. Typical characteristics of which malocclusion? Labioversion, okay, understand that. Labioversion of maxillary central incisor. That's a catch in that question. So the answer is B, which is class two, div one. Most common variant of malocclusion. Again, it has been found that class two, div one is the most common. A and B angle is used to assess A and B. I didn't say about A and B today. I just said about SNA, SNB. SNA, SNB, I told. Position of maxilla, position of mandible, I told. SNA, SNB. Now, the uh, question here is A and B angle is used to assess. I'm getting A, B, C, D, everything as answer. Guys, SNA, SNB, and the difference between SNB is, SNA and SNB is called as ANB. All this is talking about one thing that is the sidewise side view. Side view. When you say side view, it is sagittal. S, S, side view. Sagittal, please take that point tonight at least. Sagittal is side. So from the side, you're talking about my A point out, B point in, A point, B point difference called as A and B. All this we are discussing about side view that is sagittal. It has nothing to do with vertical. We are not talking about open by D by here. It's not vertical. It has nothing to do with soft tissue. A and B is the difference between SNA and SNB. So it has nothing to do with soft tissue. Dental pattern, nothing to do with dental pattern, nothing to do with crowding. SNA, SNB, A and B are all values that is showing the sagittal jaw discrepancy. Answer is A. Hope this is clear. Fatima is still confused. You have put B. Vertical. It's not vertical. Are you okay? Now identify this condition. I think I already covered a little during the twin block uh, session. Identify this condition. Okay. 
can somebody come and what this is uh, it's little tough question this has been asked multiple times in national boards australian board and even our aims and jipmer uh, i saw in multiple questions uh yeah that is it many are saying b b which is vto that is bringing the mandible forward but actually this is called as pterygoid response the moment you put the twin block for like one month or two month and remove the twin block and ask the patient to bite this is how the patient would be biting she or he forgot the original biting position be biting like this with an open bite posteriorly this particular condition is called as pterygoid response in twin block therapy which is a success indicator that your twin block therapy has worked pterygoids have responded that's called pterygoid response immediately seen in one month two month time when you remove the twin block ask the patient to bite it will be like that it is like open bite posteriorly this is called pterygoid response sans to see identify this modification i already covered that it is the with it has a head gear tube as well as an expansion but the answer luckily has no expansion screw there luckily so the answer is obviously head gear tube being incorporated it has an expansion screw also in there understand that that is i told you already it is for cases where maxilla is slightly forward you want to bring it back identify this modification i already covered that that is the expansion screw now angulation between the acrylic blocks of a twin block ideally has to be 70 degree that is considered as a stable and nice comfortable biting position for the patient and last question myofunctional appliances are highly effective okay watch carefully at this question myofunctional appliances are highly effective for which type of malocclusion prognathic maxilla normal mandible no prognathic maxilla retrognathic mandible okay adjustable i told you if it's a prognathic maxilla retrognathic mandible you can use a twin block with a head gear so maxilla can be controlled with a head gear twin block will take care of the mandible but the best is normal maxilla and retrognathic mandible that is the best condition which is most effectively treated with myofunctional appliances whether it's twin block whether it's fr2 there are multiple class 2 characters guys i'm just covering twin block here there are multiple class 2 characters but whichever be the appliance if it's a normal maxilla retrognathic mandible that is the easiest one to correct and the most effective one to correct rust all has a risk element there risk in the sense you may not get it corrected perfectly that's it 10 minutes of explanation 10 mcq questions i know i took more than 10 minutes on explanation because you know there was all sorts of uh, interaction in between but i could cover 10 questions guys how to close the open bite after twin block is out it will move along along downward to close on its own prakriti good question there comes a topic called as trimming of the twin block trimming of the twin block has to be done in such a way that the molars supra erupt and close the posterior open bite automatically so that is a second level of twin block again not asked in the mcq levels so i didn't want to uh, talk about that but it's a very good thinking very good question it will automatically close down as you reduce the use of the twin block in addition you have to trim the upper twin block in such a way that there is a clearance for the lower molar to supra erupt whenever there is an out of occlusion you can see dental supra eruptions happening so that's it guys just want to tell you about this crash testing part all the very best thank you very much for listening to me these are my 
uh, details, please feel free to contact me in case you want any clarification on the topic I discussed today, or I am going to be the faculty, one of the faculty for orthodontics in focus for your crash course program. You can look at the list of timetable. You can see in orthodontics, I am there. I'll be covering a lot of topics in orthodontics. Anything extra you want to learn, anything more you want to know, please feel free to comment. I'll be more than happy to answer. What is the suede appliance in relation to suede appliance is actually a retentive device of the twin block. After the twin block therapy is over, you are given an appliance called a suede appliance, which is, looks almost like an upper Holly's appliance with a slight bulge up there to remind the patient to keep biting forward. That's all. It's a retentive device of a twin block appliance. Never seen that question in entrance-based uh, things, suede appliance. But in my program on twin block, I cover all that on uh, suede appliances, but not an entrance-based uh, program. Anything else? If you're done, I am done. I'm not taking your time anymore. I'm sorry for the delay. Sorry for that starting delay. And in the lecture also, I know I took a little more time than required. I'm sorry about that. But I hope that I could cover twin block, that molar relationship, that occlusion relationship, and then bringing the mandible forward. What happens when you bring the mandible forward? What are the types of twin blocks, the modifications of twin block? Hope I could do justice to the short topic given to me. Thank you one and all for listening to me. And once again, I'm reminding you about the expansion stuff coming up this Sunday, August 15th, Independence Day night, 8 p.m. If you're still not a member of any of our WhatsApp group where I am in, it's called as online dentistry. If you're not there, please let me know. I can either add you to online dentistry WhatsApp group or I will guide you how to attend the program this Sunday on expansions. But those are private practitioner-based classes. It's a one-hour program, private practitioner-based classes, not MCQ-based classes. Let me tell you very clearly, but it won't hurt. It will not hurt. What I suggest is read about RPE, rapid palatal expansion, slow palatal expansion, RPE, SME, RME whatever you want to call it, slow maxillary expansion, rapid maxillary expansion. Read those topics on Sunday morning or Sunday afternoon from your MCQ-based thing and then come and listen to me on Sunday night at 8 p.m. Thank you very much. Can we call this a day? Are we done? Any more questions? Let me know. Perfect. I'm getting a lot of thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Which means, yeah, enough, sir. Enough, sir. Enough, sir. Or thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Whatever it is, I guess I am done. Thank you very much, one and all, for listening to me. Wish you all the best for the crash program coming up. Do well. Dedicate yourself to studies. Any help you need, especially in orthodontics, please feel free to ask me. I'm not the only faculty of focus in orthodontics, but Altaf sir is also there in orthodontic faculty list. We both are sharing multiple topics. We will make sure that you get maximum benefit in the topic orthodontics. Thank you very much. Good night. Let me sign off.